Well, hey, good morning, Riv. My name is Young, and I am on staff at Riv as the MSU venue director. It's great to be with you all this morning on Good Friday. Uh, you know, you might be thinking, why in the world is today called Good Friday as we think and reflect and meditate on the death of Jesus Christ? And what we're going to find in the scriptures is that because of Jesus' death, though it was so gruesome and un honestly necessary, um, we see that in his death, that there is eternal life to be found for those who believe in his sacrifice on the cross. And that is why we can call today Good Friday. For our time today, I want to take us through a couple of passages here, uh, starting off with the uh, passage from the book of Mark. And this is after Jesus had been mocked and scorned and ridiculed and beaten. He's now hanging on the cross, about to perish. And this is what Mark writes in Mark 15, verse 33 through 35. He says, When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? You know, as we uh, look at this passage, it, it, it just shows us the weight of the sin that, that we carry in our humanity, that, this, that it has enveloped this entire world world because the effects of sin as we see here is that as Jesus takes on our sin while hanging on that cross, he is for the first time in all of eternity separated between him and his loving father because that is the effect that sin has uh, on us in our lives. And you know, as, as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, man, this is sounds a lot like the coronavirus uh, where coronavirus has you know, entrenched itself into humanity right now and in our world. And it has literally separated and divided communities, separated us from our loved ones. And the thing about sin is that it goes so much deeper than, um, than coronavirus could ever touch. Because not only does sin separate uh, us from one another, because maybe you've sinned against somebody else, or maybe somebody sinned against you, but um, sin separates us from God. And what we see on the cross of Jesus Christ is that He, out of His love for us, takes on that sin so that we no longer have to be separated from God. There is now another path that we can take to have communion with God once and forevermore. And you know, as I, as I think about this, and as I look at this account of Jesus on the cross and his sacrifice on the cross, I want to take us to uh, the book of John as he writes and reflects on uh, the last parts and the last, honestly, minutes probably of Jesus, uh, uh, his sacrifice on the cross. In John chapter uh, 19, this is what Jesus, or this is what John uh, writes about Jesus. It says, after this, when Jesus knew that everything was now finished, that the scripture might be fulfilled. He said, I am thirsty. And a, a jar full of sour wine was sitting there. So they fixed a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it up to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, get this, he said, it is finished. Then bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So Jesus, he, he finally passes away on the cross as he sacrifices himself. And I want to zoom in on that phrase, it is finished. In the Greek there, uh, it's written in the perfect tense, which is pretty uncommon. And the thing that you need to know about that phrase is that in the Greek, it is called tetelestai. And the thing about that phrase is, uh, what it means is that a present action has its effects continuing on from that point till forever, meaning that all of Jesus' work and his death on the cross bearing our sins so that we do not have to bear the, the consequences of our sin, from that point on, that effect is carried on till now, even now in 2020, especially for those who would believe in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And so, my friends, we don't have to worry about our sin, the things that bring us shame and guilt of having its effect last in our lives. But Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross gives us another option where we can be liberated by the gospel for the rest of our life because Jesus says, it is finished. He said, to die, where we can also 
uh, enjoy the effects of being able to commune with God once and for all. That is why Jesus said, it is finished. And so as we reflect on this on Good Friday today, uh, you know, we can think, what are the, what are, how am I supposed to approach this? Do I mourn? Do I celebrate? You know, uh, Mark writes the, an account of, of a centurion who was standing next to Jesus as he died on the cross. And this is what Mark writes. It says, when the centurion who was standing opposite him saw the way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. My friends, we can take a, a, a cue from the centurion where we don't have to mourn the death of Christ. We don't have to necessarily just celebrate it, but we recognize, and this is our response, is that we recognize that Jesus was not just some, some crazy guy that he thought he was God. He was not some guy who was uh, trying to uh, you know, overthrow the government, but truly according to this centurion who even identified Jesus as the Son of God, that is our heart posture, is that Jesus, who is the Son of God, who is God, out of his love for us, gave himself for, up for us on the cross. He took on our sins so that we do not have to be separated from God for all eternity. But in fact, through Jesus and his sacrifice, for those who would believe, we can have everlasting and eternal communion. Because remember, tetelestai, that effect goes on for the rest of our lives. And so as you reflect on that uh, this morning, I just want to encourage you, man, Jesus, his sacrifice on the cross is powerful and it liberates us uh, from our sin for all of eternity. Thanks for watching, friends. I hope this encourages you. See you tomorrow. Peace.